So first, uh, let me tell you what is human robotics. So human robotics, um, it is using robotics as a technique to understand the control of human movements. And also uh, it is to create robot to help human like this robotic wheelchair. So on the left, you see this, uh, you see this hand that is a bit special with six fingers. So this is uh, people who we have um, observed. And, and so we have seen that they can control their fingers for uh, better manipulations than uh, most of us with five fingers. Okay. so. Uh, let me take the next slide. So uh, I want to speak about uh, some more scientific or theoretical aspect while uh, Paul will speak more about the rehabilitation aspect and, and uh, the, the devices we have developed together. Okay, so I want to speak about haptic communication in human and with robots. So you see that obviously, so when you want to dance, you have to, uh, you cannot uh, every five seconds or every second ask in which direction you want to go. You have to understand from the, from the interaction where the movement will be. And that, that may be perhaps the same. So for a physiotherapist, a physiotherapist is interacting with a patient and uh, it, is, it is not clear exactly what the physiotherapist is doing. Uh, and of course, it's, it may be interesting and important to understand, but it's especially uh, it is important to understand what they communicate to the haptic interaction, so to the touch and, and the forces exchange. And why it is also important is that because nowadays we developed uh, rehabilitation robots, so to try to increase the, 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 the intensity of rehabilitation, of training. And for that, we would like to understand how to, how to best control this robot. And, and so one way would be to say, okay, so we want to control the robot like a physiotherapist, a physiotherapist would do. Another way would be to think maybe perhaps the robot can even do better than a therapist. In any case, we have to understand what the human therapist is, is doing. So to understand the, the, the exchange of, of haptic information between two people, so we use such complicated uh, dual robot mechanisms. So each of these subjects is uh, connected to a robot and the two robots can be connected together uh, from the software, so from the programming. And these two, these two subjects entered in the room at the same time so they, they know that they, they can see each other. They cannot see the movement of the, of the, 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 the colleague. And uh, okay, so this is a task that both have to do. They don't know that they have to do the same task, but they have to do the same task. So they have to, they have to, to track this red target with a cursor with the hand that is uh, the, the white cursor. And, and each is doing this. And what they don't know is that at some trial, you have a connection between the two hands. So like a, a, a spring between the two hands. So um, the two subjects are connected together, the two partners are connected together, and they are connected in a way that it's a, it's a compliant uh, spring. So it cannot, it cannot make uh, the task from the other. So you cannot let the, the other guide your movement completely. You have to do yourself. And okay, so they are connected, not connected, connected, not connected, etc. And uh, for one minute trials, and after the 60 trial, we ask them the subject, so what happened? Because they felt a force. So we, we so they felt a force, we ask them, so what was the force? And basically, no one of them can find. So, in this eighty uh, subject of the of the first experiment, only two of them found out that they were in fact connected. Um, okay. So another question that we ask them is: so is the force helping you, or or is it disturbing you? And all of them find that the force is disturbing them. But in fact, it is helping them 
as we can see in, so we can see this in this uh, graph. So you see uh, the, the, the black line on the right. So it, uh, it's showing uh, the improvement when you have a better partner. And, and so you, you improve with a better partner, right? Now, the, 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 the strange and, and the surprising result is that actually you also, uh, you also improve when you interact with a, a worse partner, so this, this is on the left. So in, in any case, in every case, you can, you can improve with the partner. So whether the partner is, whether the partner is, is better or, or even if the partner is worse. Okay, so let me now have taken my iPad so that I was slow at doing that. Okay, so with a, with a better partner, then you improve the better partner, the better, the more you win. And with the worst partner, you still, you still win. And this is something completely different than if you interact with, with a robot that is guiding you along the movement, just guiding you along the movement. In this case, you win with a better robot, but you lose with a worse robot. Okay, so we wanted to understand why a uh, human can win by, by making the, uh, the task together. And so we tried several models, but the model that, that, that is winning is a, a kind of crazy idea is that, okay, so I'm, I have my hand, I have my, I have my vision, and then I have also um, haptic sensing with a partner. And what is happening is, from the haptic sensing, I become able to understand what is the target for the partner. So I, I, so it's like if I have my eyes, but I also have the eyes of the partner, and I can I can use these two pairs of eyes to uh, to better track the target. And when we simulate this strategy, we see that we get results that are close to the experimental results. So I win with a better, uh, better partner and I also win with a worse partner. Now, when you do simulation, normally you always win, right? It's always working as you imagine because you construct the simulation. Now, so we wanted to, to make a, a strong, to try testing most, more, uh, most quickly, then what we did is that instead of having uh, two people connected uh, with a spring, what we did is that we connect one subject with a, a robotic partner. And this robot partner is basically using the information from the subject to find out where the subject wants to go and combine with its own information. And we assume the robot would do that. And, and we assume also the human would do the same. And what we find is that, in fact, the robot partner has very similar performance. And uh, so the connection with the robot partner, uh, you get very similar uh, benefits than uh, being connected with a, a human partner. So this is strong evidence that so the mechanism is really that when I'm connected with another human, then automatically my brain is finding out what this other human is looking at and so can use this information to improve uh, my own performance. So one question is also, so whether it can be uh, differentiated from a human. So you have this robot partner, so we do experiments with uh, so connection with a human partner, connection with this robot partners that we have developed and comparison with trajectory guidance. Why we compare it? Because trajectory guidance is what you normally have in training robot for sports or for rehabilitation. Um, what we find, so when we change the, the connection of the stiffness, so making it more rigid here, of course, when you are guided along the trajectory, you get the best guidance, but it's not necessarily an advantage because uh, it can make that it's preventing learning. Now, when you have uh, when you have robot partner or human partner, 
you see that you still get the same deviation. So the robot or the human is not constraining you to move along one single trajectory, but it's just assisting you on, on your movement. Now, we also ask them in a questionnaire, so several questions about the interaction. So, whether, so we ask them whether the interaction is with a human and when they are connected with a robot, they find no, very clearly. When they are connected with either a, a human or, uh, or the robot partner, then uh, it's much less clear and, and it, is, it is similar. And we ask them another question, so whether they are in control and when they interact with the trajectory guidance, when they are guided by the robot, then uh, no, they are not in control. But when uh, they interact with either the human or uh, uh, the robot partner, then they are in control. So it's, it means that basically this robot partner is not felt as different from uh, from a human partner. And what is strange is that when you ask them what they prefer, they prefer working, uh, being guided by the robot, and we can connect this, we can correlate with uh, the fact that they find it more predictable. So they like to be guided by a, a somehow stupid robot, rather than being assisted by a, a, a clever human or a clever robot. Uh, however, it doesn't mean being guided by the robot is necessarily better, especially for training, for learning, you should not constrain because it's changing your behavior, what we found in, in other studies. Another study that we did, we, we wondered whether, okay, so when I'm connected with one person, I'm becoming better. What happens is if I'm connected with two or three or four people? And that a study we did, so you have four robots and you have different kinds of interactions. So you can be connected to two people or you can be connected to, to these two partners or you can be connected to the three partners. And what, so this is the, the connection to one partner. So you see again that you improve uh, with a better partner and you do not lose with a worse partner. It's decreasing a bit relatively to before because we put a lot of visual noise to uh, make different uh, skill level. Now, what we expected is that when you have a, a larger group, we expected that you would win more with a, a good group, but also lose more with a bad group. What we find in experiment is that effectively, uh, the larger the group, the more you win. Now, what happens with if you have a, a, a bad uh, a partner in, in your group, what happens is that basically you do not lose. So you do not lose with a, a, a one bad subject in a group and you, you win with a very good subject in a group. So meaning that you could make collective action and, and always win. So for example, if you, uh, if you carry a table together or, or work together. Okay, so what does it mean altogether? So we have, uh, we have found out that this haptic communication in human uh, is automatic, that you get information about the, the, the partner the person you are connected to, you make a model of that person so that you can win sensor information from that person. So where this person want to go? And um, so it is interesting to compare this haptic uh, communication with communication by language, for example. So when it is language, then, so, you know, politicians all speak about the same time, but it's not about it's not about communication. When you want to communicate, you have to wait that the has has finished his sentence. And, and so in haptics, you have connection at the same time and still you are able to uh, make something of this in, that information. Um, another thing is that so when you speak with a person about, for example, a picture, then uh, you have to assume whether this person is lying, whether this person wants you to, to tell the truth or, or not. 
And in haptics, you don't have, you cannot lie. I mean, the interaction you give is, is the real interaction. And we have seen also that the larger the group, the better the performance. So what could it mean for, for rehabilitation? So you have a lot of robots that are used with, in contact with humans. So not only in rehabilitation, actually also in industry. And, and such robot could get the information from the user to, to help uh, or, or to come against this user to better, um, to better target the interaction. And uh, so the, this gives also the possibility of social rehabilitation. So you may do social rehabilitation. So two, uh, two, two, two patients connected by a robot and it, interacting. And, and maybe you, can, you could even think about uh, 20 patients in a hospital making some kind of group therapy. Uh, in uh, each in the bed or, or, or maybe at the same place, but connected not only by the usual social interaction to language and, and vision, but also by this haptic interaction that is a basic exchange of, uh, of uh, force and, and touch. And that's all for my presentation.